Hi, this is the second of two videos dealing with Pascal's triangle. In the first video, we looked at some well-known patterns that it contains. In this video, we will look at how the terms relate to the binomial expansion and the normal distribution curve in probability. In the first of this two-part video series, we looked at the expansion of the binomial brackets and looked at the coefficients. Here's the expansion up to a plus b to the power of 7. If we look at the coefficients of each term, which are the ones in red, we can list them to form our Pascal triangle. There it is. And then we looked at some well-known number patterns that can be found in Pascal's triangle, notably Fibonacci sequence, perfect squares and triangular numbers. Now let's proceed to look at some more important things. And the first thing we have to know is a definition, a very important one, which is called the factorial. Basically the factorial of a number, and it must be a positive whole number, which we will refer to as the letter N, is written as N with the exclamation mark at the end, but we don't say that, we actually say N factorial. And we define it to be, and that's what's shown there in the rectangle, N factorial is equal to N times bracket N minus 1 and so on, all the way down to 3 times 2 times 1. Now what that means is that N factorial is the product of the first N positive whole numbers. And the example that I've shown there, 5 factorial, that is the same as 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is equal to 120. A special condition of that, we take that 0 factorial is equal to 1. Now if you have access to a graphics calculator or a scientific calculator, you will find that it has inbuilt functions to work out factorials. You might want to investigate that. Now let's apply that idea to an example. Let's suppose we have four letters A, B, C and D. We want to know in how many ways can we choose 0, 1, 2, 3 or 4 letters. Given that the order of choosing letters is unimportant, that means choosing, let's say, AB is the same as choosing BA. Well, choosing zero letters is easy, isn't it? There's only one way we can do that. That means do absolutely nothing. To choose one letter, there are four ways we can do that. We can choose either A, B, C or D. For two letters, there are six ways. We can choose either A, B, A, C, A, D, B, C, B, D or C, D. For three letters, there are four ways, as you can see there. And for four letters, one way. That means choosing all four letters at the same time. Notice the symmetry in the answers, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Does it remind you of anything relating to Pascal's triangle? There it is. The fifth row of Pascal's triangle is identical to our solution, isn't it? For the number of ways of choosing up to four letters. So what can we conclude from that? NR in those set of brackets where N is a positive whole number that we've used for factorial and R is another positive whole number where R is not greater than N and that will represent the number of ways of choosing R objects from N objects. And to work that out we have the formula shown there nr is equal to n factorial on the top divided by r factorial bracket n minus r factorial. Just to demonstrate that with an example, let's say we have 5, 3. Substituting the values in our formula, we have 5 factorial over 3 factorial bracket 5 minus 3 factorial. And simplifying that, we have 5 factorial over 3 factorial, 2 factorial, 5 factorial means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and 3 factorial on the bottom is 3 times 2 times 1 and 2 factorial is 2 times 1 and simplifying all that we get an answer of 10. Now that means the number of ways of choosing 3 objects from 5 objects when the order is not important is 10 and you might want to um, 
convince yourself of that. Let's say choosing three letters from the letters A, B, C, D and E. You will find that there are ten ways of doing that. And using this notation, for our previous example, we can write it as zero letters up to four letters. Choosing zero letters, there's one way we said, and we can write that as four zero. Choosing one letter, there are four ways. That comes out to be four one, and so on. Now, this is useful because with this notation, we can replace our terms of our Pascal triangle. There's our Pascal triangle using the terms we're familiar with. Let's replace them with our new notation. So the first row, 1 was replaced with 0, 0, and so on. Also shown there, as you can see, is the expansion equivalent of that, where it came from. And our last row. Now let's see how that relates to our binomial expansion. In the first line there, if we have the expansion of a plus b to the power of n, where n is any positive whole number, you can see the distribution of terms written with our new notation. And just simplifying that, we get the second line there, which is a plus b to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n plus n1, a to the power of n minus 1b, and so on. Now, what is useful from that is obtaining the kth term. That means any particular term that we want. That is given by what's shown there in the rectangle, that the kth term is given by bracket n k minus 1 times a to the power of n minus k plus 1 b to the power of k minus 1. Applying that to an example, let's suppose you wanted to work out the tenth term of the expansion to a plus b to the power of 12. Where would you start? Well, power of 12, of course, means n has to be 12. And we want the tenth term, so k is equal to 10. We make the substitutions, and that's what it looks like before simplifying. And after simplifying, it becomes 12, 9, a to the power of 3, b to the power of 9. And that is the tenth term. And of course we can work out what 12, 9 is as a normal number. It comes out to be 220. So the tenth term of the expansion to a plus b to the power of 12 is 220 a cubed b to the power of 9. Now all that is leading to probability and how the binomial expansion relates to that. It turns out that there is a strong connection between the expansion of a plus b to the power of n and probabilities, particularly when the probability of a plus the probability of b is equal to 1. And that's why it's referred to as a binomial probability. And we can show that with an example. In the normal course of events, the probability that a baby is going to be born a boy is a half, 0.5, and the probability that the baby will be a girl is also 0.5. Let's suppose in a hospital, eight babies are about to be born. What's the chance or probability that three of them will be girls? Let's start by representing the letter A to mean girls and the letter B to mean boys. Now we know the probability of each. Probability of a girl is 0.5. Probability of a boy is 0.5. Five also. We have a group of eight babies, so n will be eight. So substituting that into our formula, we get the expression you can see there. Now we want three girls and five boys. That means we want the term to be a to the power of three, b to the power of five. Can you see why k has to equal six in the expression to give us a to the power of three, b to the power of five? Because in the previous line, we have at the end a to the power of 9 minus k. Now, we want 9 minus k to equal 3, don't we? So that means k must be 6. Okay, so we've got our k value, and our n value was 8. Substituting our value for k, and also substituting our values for a and b, that's the expression we obtain, and using a calculator, we can work it out and that gives us a final answer of about 0 0.21875. Changing that to a percentage by multiplying by 100, it's approximately 22%. So that means the probability out of the eight babies that three of them will be girls and five will be boys 
is about 22%. Not a very high percentage, is it? We can simulate this example and try to demonstrate our previous example of the probability of choosing five boys and three girls. It consists of a triangular structure, in other words, Pascal's triangle, up to the eighth row. And each of those yellow circles represents one of the terms of Pascal's triangle. We, of course, are interested in the bottom row. And underneath that, you can see in green that we have starting with 8B, 0G, and so on. That means 8 boys, no girls, and then 7 boys, 1 girl, and so on. So what will happen is a ball will drop from the top and it will hit the first yellow circle and because it's a binomial distribution there are only two choices for that ball on impact it could either go left or right and that will happen each time it strikes another yellow ball and of course when it gets to the bottom it will represent one of those combinations of boys and girls so let's see how it works There's the first iteration. The percentages are also shown, each time updated. And at the very bottom, you might be able to see that it will show you, as a horizontal bar, each of those iterations. What will happen towards the end is, after 1,000 iterations, the general shape which will resemble very much the normal distribution curve or the bell curve as we call it. After 1000 iterations notice what's happened. For three girls and five boys our answer is about 22.7 percent is pretty much spot on to what we said was approximately 22 percent. Beneath that the shape of the curve obtained is a pretty good representation of our normal distribution curve, which in general will look something like that. The normal distribution curve, or the bell curve, is represented where the area underneath is 100%, and for our example of about 22%, it represents that part shaded in green of the total. That means the probability of three girls and five boys. I hope you found these two videos useful and until next time, bye bye.